Thank you so much. And uh, on behalf of Quest Diagnostics and uh, the New York Giants, I'd like to thank everyone for joining today's webinar. My name is Richard Schwabacher. I'm the Executive Director for Sports Science and Human Performance at Quest Diagnostics. And we are very pleased to present today case studies from Ronnie Barnes, Senior Vice President and Head Athletic Trainer for the New York Football Giants. Uh, certainly, Ronnie is someone who does not need an introduction, but I will attempt to give a brief overview of his very distinguished career. Uh, Ronnie uh, has lectured nationally and internationally on sports medicine. He is the author of a popular textbook, which I'm sure some of you have uh, seen and studied before, called Athletic Training in Sports Medicine, the third edition. He's been with the New York Giants organization since 1976. In 2002, he was voted the Athletic Trainer of the Year by the NFL Physicians. He, had, he was elected in 1999 to the National Athletic Trainers Association Hall of Fame. Uh, he has served on the uh, National Athletic Trainers Association Board of Certification for 10 years and has served as president of that organization, I think on multiple occasions. Uh, he is a seven-year term president of the Professional Football Athletic Trainers Society, or PFAS. Um, he is widely looked at as a luminary in this field and one of our uh, very, very favorite partners. In fact, we are very proud to be partnered with both him and the New York Giants. Um, we will have the opportunity at the end of today's webinar to uh, have a few questions. Uh, and so we hope that you uh, stay on with us for that. But first, let me just go over the objectives of today's uh, webinar. Uh, primarily, we'd like to discuss the value of biomarker monitoring for team protocols. Uh, Ronnie is going to uh, present a few case studies uh, here at the New York Giants and specifically uh, with Mark Herzlick. He will uh, give an overview of the New York Giants uh, initial need for, for the Blueprint for Athletes program, how the results are interpreted and applied, and the insights that they're able to uh, glean from Blueprint for Athletes. Uh, he'll show uh, or he'll demonstrate uh, the evaluation of data insights and how they improve team and player performance. And with that, uh, I'm very happy to turn it over to Ronnie Barnes. Ronnie? Thank you, Richard, and it sounds like we have a big agenda and a short time to do it, but we certainly will accomplish most of, of those objectives. Uh, here at the Giants, we needed a tool that addressed our questions about performance, and we uh, had met with strength coaches and nutritionists, exercise physiologists, all asking questions about how we could train smarter. Um, uh, we knew that, that, that we had some of the very best athletes uh, in the country uh, playing uh, uh, combative football or, or football, and, and clearly uh, we needed to know more about, one, how to train them and, and, and how to feed them and how to practice them and, all, and everything that surrounds uh, our game. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were not creating uh, a cycle of damage. We're working for or against the athlete in terms of what we were doing, uh, both in our strength and conditioning program and in our football program practices. And we looked, we wanted to, a tool too that helped us look at nutrition and performance and wanted to make certain that we weren't missing something. Were there any nutritional barriers uh, that, that were there that would um, prohibit our athletes from uh, uh, achieving top performance? And of course, uh, new training protocols. How, how could we inter integrate sports science and biomarker monitoring into our, our team protocol? Well, the, the Giants have uh, have been focused on sports science for quite some time uh, and using data to, to leverage uh, team and player success. And we began looking at data uh, probably in the 1980s. And, and, and the first uh, time that we really realized that we had a huge bank of data uh, was in selecting players for the NFL draft. Not only uh, did we have all of the, the data that our scouts collected, but we had the medical data that we collected at the combine, including uh, many biomarkers and orthopedic and medical 
medical exams. So we, we began collecting this data uh, to, to help us kind of understand not only the athletes we were bringing into the system, uh, but uh, following them as, um, a, as they progressed uh, through our team. But, but you know, we were just collecting data. We weren't able to make it actionable. Well, uh, as I told you, we've been doing it since the 80s, and, and, and really not until about 85 or 86 did uh, many of the NFL teams start to use computers. And once we, uh, we, we got computers, we're able to input this nutri nutritional data, uh, and uh, we were able to look at what we were doing in the weight room and the nutritional needs of our players. We were able to do inventory of what our players were eating. Uh, we also were be beginning to store uh, the data on players from their 40 or their long jump or their vertical jump. All of this data was important to us. However, uh, we, 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 didn't, um, we weren't able to overcome the barrier of, of what exactly to do next. I think as, as we moved into the 21st century and, and really in, in contemporary times over the last uh, uh, 10 years uh, and, uh, and growing, new tools and new databases and platforms and technologies have, involved, have evolved. And I think this has made it much easier for the New York Giants and for other teams and for uh, exercise physiologists and all of us who are interested in the performance of athletes to really understand this data. Uh, here at the Giants, we've added player tracking devices, uh, sleep monitoring uh, devices, heart rate monitors. Uh, you know, something that we, what we have learned in working with elite athletes is that the difference between a, a finalist and a gold medalist, say, at the Olympics, is about 1%. So what we do know is that athletes are always seeking the competitive edge. Uh, and in order to help them find that competitive edge, both uh, data from individual athletes and from uh, team accumulated data is so important. And uh, many articles have been written about uh, Olympians, and I think the truth can be said, uh, the same truth can be said about NFL players, that they will do anything, almost, to get an ounce of competitive advantage. Um, so I, I've always had an interest in sports science because, like many on the call, you know, exercise physiology is a part of my background. Sports science, uh, to me, is different from, say, exercise science. Uh, for me, and I think for many of you, sports science is concerned with uh, applying the science to maximize performance of an individual player or even as a team. And, uh, and, and we can do that by using biomarkers and other technological advances. Uh, to me, exercise science, which most of us studied and, and I just referred, is primarily concerned with applying science to improve health and, and well-being through exercise. Uh, and so we wanted to move beyond looking at the wellness portion and, um, and look for indicators uh, for performance. Uh, we had questions about uh, uh, performance that, uh, that exist in data tools and, and performance tools didn't really completely answer. So uh, how could the team uh, and the players train smarter? That was a big question. Uh, how could we determine when our players were or trained, over, trained or overtrained? And, and, and as we all know, uh, overtraining and fatigue is a big element for for the cycle of damage. Um, we also want to know, were we building them up, as I spoke about before, or really were we tearing them down? Uh, were we missing something in the nutrition piece, and, and just how, how could we do this better? So I, I, don't, I still don't think we have all of the answers, uh, but with the use of uh, the Blueprint for Athletes and uh, biomarker technology, I think we're getting closer to that answer than ever before. And, um, and, and I, our background with, um, with uh, Quest Diagnostics and the Blueprint for athlete, Athletes created a relationship um, for us that really was very, very important. And we really didn't know it at the time. We were approached in 2013 about looking at a 
panel of biomarkers that would uh, be important to, to athlete performance. And I think we learned very quickly from Quest Diagnostics that uh, biomarker testing is at the center of personalized medicine. And since we began to talk in 2013, I, I don't think you can turn on the television and watch a, 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 a scientific program about, about medicine where someone is not referring to biomarkers and, and, and using the word uh, biomarkers. Uh, we hear it all the time expressed uh, with cancer therapy. Uh, and of course, um, there's something that I learned very early is that our athletes understood biomarkers before we did. Uh, the, the word biomarker uh, refers to any uh, of your body's molecules that can be measured uh, to assess health. Uh, these molecules can be obtained, as, as, as we all know, from blood, uh, from body fluids, or from tissue. And since we'd been collecting blood for years and, and just looking for abnormal values for disease, um, it certainly made perfect sense that looking at this to try to determine and, and, and to, uh, to really drill down and help our players with performance, that this was a perfect place for us to, to get involved. So, but what, what we discovered is that our players had already discovered what biomarkers were. Um, uh, they were already sending urine and blood and hair follicles and even uh, sputum to, to what I would call some suspect laboratories for uh, recommendations. And, and those recommendations were primarily for vitamin supplementation. Uh, and, uh, and so now to get the support of a, an organization as, uh, um, as well thought of and uh, as uh, Quest Laboratories uh, to create something, especially for athletes, a bl blueprint for athletes, uh, this, this was a win-win for us. Uh, uh, the BFA concept uh, uh, helped us think beyond uh, blood testing for disease. Uh, and we start to uh, realize that we could monitor the fitness and the readiness of our players uh, and help them uh, compete at a, at a high level with maximal performance. In terms of, uh, of developing the blueprint, uh, we, we got our team physicians, our athletic trainers, our physical therapists, strength coaches, nutritionists, exercise physi physiologists, all together in one room. And we had discussions about which biomarkers uh, were important to ath uh, athletics uh, performance or to an athlete's performance. And uh, I, I think that it was very helpful for us to do this. But what we discovered at that meeting is that, uh, that we, we, we didn't have the answers and that we didn't really know what we, what we needed. So we, we all contributed our thoughts and ideas about this uh, in, in the beginning. Uh, but, you know, the science um, was sparse. Uh, today it's growing steadily, and and uh, we we what we discovered is that we needed more help essentially to to kind of figure out what was important. So, uh, Quest Diagnostics assembled a scientific advisory board, and uh, uh, and these folks were uh, nationally renowned scientists, and they helped Quest and the Giants determine uh, what was important for our athletes in terms of performance and and overall wellness. Um, uh, Quest Diagnostics actually uh, loaned us an exercise physiologist uh, from the University of Florida to help us understand what we were looking for and how we could best u uh, utilize the, the data that we uh, were collecting. And, and this was uh, extremely important to us be, because often it was a review, uh, but we, we, we needed this. We, be, we, we actually began to understand, uh, you know, the, the importance of C-reactive protein as a, as a marker for inflammation or uh, creatinine kinase as a marker for uh, muscle tissue that had been sheared into the bloodstream as a result of exercise and, and it's a real, and 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 uh, CK's relationship uh, with fatigue uh we were able to discuss uh, biomarkers like DHEA and testosterone uh and how these uh, hormones affect performance uh things that we really hadn't talked about uh we, we're not able to collect some of these hormones in the NFL uh, but I think that that day will come and it will be acceptable uh, to look at those things. Uh, we relearned about cortisol and insulin, all, things that we all knew and, and studied, uh, but 
and we, and, and, and uh, working with athletes, we, we really had to think about that the way a scientist would think about it. So add all this together uh, with the, the routine wellness biomarkers that we were already doing, we realized that we had an extensive panel uh, that we were already doing and that, that uh, if we looked at this data, that we'd be able to help it our athletes in a in a significant way. Uh, as I personally looked at it, I, I realized that um, that we were trailing behind European soccer, uh, Australian rules football, and Olympic sports, who are already doing this. Uh, American football and and, uh, and some of the other American sports are slowly catching up to our international uh, colleagues. Uh, in baseball, for instance. Uh, Scientists are trying to figure out the correlation between the pitch count and throwing arm injuries. This is so important. Uh, often a, a starting pitcher will be removed from a game after 100 pitches, which is considered the maximum uh, optimal pinch count, and it's it's rather arbitrary. Uh, this number is is based on their injury statistics, but but nonetheless, it's an arbitrary number. Uh, scientists uh, in the U.S. Have, have begun looking at biomarkers that uh, be help that are helpful to predict joint stresses. Uh, so I, I think soon, you know, our physicians and scientists will be looking at the same biomarkers regarding ACL injury in, in football. Um, the goals for the team in terms of implementing the blueprint for athletes was so important to us. Our primary goal was to help the players maximize uh, their training and, 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 of course, to achieve success on the field, both in, individually and collectively. Uh, we wanted the, the blueprint for athletes to be a performance tool as well as a wellness tool. And we wanted to be able to use the BFA to, to better educate our players. Uh, we wanted to be transparent with the players that, and make them understand that they, under, uh, that they own this data uh, and that we were doing it for their benefit. Um, we also uh, uh, educated our players that the, there was a, this was an evolving science and that the more participation we had, the more uh, we learned individually and collectively. So it's important that our, our players received the results in a, in a unique and informative way uh, that they could understand, and, and, and Quest in the Blueprint for Athletes did that in a, in a very brilliant way in terms of uh, pictures and, and descriptions of the biomarkers and, and what they all meant, and, and it really helped our team physicians and athletic trainers counsel our players regarding uh, certain biomarkers. Uh, our, our goal was uh, also to, to get a buy-in from, from the physicians uh, that I just mentioned and our nutritionists um, because all of these folks, the, the, the nutritionists, the, the uh, team physicians, the athletic trainers, physical therapists, all play a role in helping uh, in the athlete's uh, performance. Um, our relationship with Quest Diagnostics really springboarded our sports science initiative. Uh, and I, and I, I say that with, a, with an awful lot of pride um, and, and gratefulness to, to Quest because we began to, to gather everyone around the building who had an interest in moving forward this. And, and, and uh, this was a performance and wellness-based uh, initiative exclusive of the coaching staff uh, and, and those who dealt with health and performance. So uh, coaches were out of it. And it was the medical personnel, the strength conditioning coaches, exercise scientists, and the players looking at this data. Um, so it really was our first uh, initiative in sports science for the for the Giants. Uh, and and then uh, following this came our initiative in looking at uh, modalities in sports science. For instance, catapult player tracking, uh, where we put 90 tracking units on, on our players. Uh, we began to look at sleep band monitoring technology, a mega wave, uh, and, and uh, refine our recovery strategies. We looked for a platform where we could store all this data with, say, Coach Me Plus. Uh, and we uh, moved from uh, using functional movement screens to other uh, uh, batteries of tests or other testing modalities. 
We've since hired a full-time dietitian who happens to be a, a nutritionist strength coach uh, and a, a full-time analytics person because data now became very important to us. And believe me, we're just beginning to scratch the surface, but it's it, this has been um, a, a work in progress that's been uh, very, very important. What I know, and, and I think what you all know, is that an athlete's body can really tell us what we need to know uh, about training our athletes safely. Um, it can help us reduce injury, prolong careers, um, and, and tell us what they should be eating, whether they're hydrated, uh, whether they're fatigued. All of this information uh, helps us maintain a, a healthy environment for our players. Um, uh, as we begin to look at um, some of the uh, data, if we look at slide number five, uh, nutrition, recovery, hydration, overtraining, endurance, inflammation, those were all of the things that were so important to us. Um, uh, and, uh, and and so we we began to look at it very carefully and uh, and and try to develop some protocols that would address all of this. If we look at uh, at slide number six, we we began to dig in a little deeper. I, I'm getting pretty long winded, so I'm going to move forward a little quickly. Uh, but as we uh, as we began to look at it, we we wanted to look at our training table, what we were feeding our athletes. Um, we started with our nutritionists and, and all of the folks involved, including our, our chef and our food service provider and our CFO. Uh, and, and one of the things that I realized that we, we were not purchasing the highest quality of food. So uh, we commissioned um, someone uh, from our food service department to look at the, all the highest quality of chicken, beef, pork, uh, uh, fruits and vegetables so that we could um, uh, transcend the quality issue because there is a difference in quality and price. But at, in the NFL, um, clearly we could afford the best. And with the CFO on board, uh, we began to, uh, to purchase uh, the best. Our nutritionists uh, began to look at the data from um, the Blueprint for Athletes. And with this, she was able to uh, continue to uh, talk about the balanced diet, you know, uh, reducing fat uh, uh, in, in the diet, vitamins and minerals, hydration. So, but I, I think this tool was so helpful to her. Um, the changes we made in the training table uh, were in quality and, of course, in some selections. We had lean, leaner meat um, with less fat. Uh, we fresh berries and wild salmon and beans and lagoons and root vegetables, uh, a, a complete change in what we were doing. Uh, whole wheat pasta um, and, uh, and broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. Uh, one, one of the most amazing things in terms of, of, of the nutrition side is we removed uh, bacon and tater tots from, uh, for almost a year from the trading table. I can tell you that it was a disaster and almost a rebellion, um, but uh, uh, we, were, we were able to add that back very slowly. Uh, we labeled all of the foods for the nutritional value for our players and enabled them to uh, bar scan at, so that they could make healthy selections. Uh, we introduced uh, recovery smoothies and healthy snacks throughout the day. Uh, we installed fueling stations that were set up for easy access uh, by the players, and uh, we revamped our use of recovery drinks and products um, in, a, in a more scientific matter, manner. Excuse me. Um, an important area that, that to, to me as an athletic trainer uh, was to uh, help our coach understand training and regimens and loads. And, and we were able to use the BFA to help us with this. Um, our head coach took an interest in recovery, and he revamped his weekly schedule uh, that dedicated Fridays to recovery. He also uh, changed his practice schedule. So using the GPS data um, uh, that we were uh, monitoring on all 90 players, uh, he varied the, the length and the duration, and more importantly, he bought into our hydration stat, uh, strategies. 
So we were able to uh, implement many hydration breaks throughout the practice, and uh, he called them TV timeouts, which he would announce uh, throughout the practice, and players took, a, took an opportunity to, uh, not because of the heat, but because we, we wanted to keep our players constantly hydrated, um, they were able to, to have easily accessible uh, beverages. Uh, and we began to look at new recovery strategies, uh, from the Friday recovery uh, stations to yoga to massage to hydrotherapy to recovery boots for lower extremity and uh, and 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 we were able to spend some time with corrective exercises. So really, BFA, uh, um, which started as as, as uh, something as simple as let's look at um, at these biomarkers, led us to to think more about performance, think more about how we trained our athletes. And, and this is real. So, uh, I, from from that standpoint, um, we we began to um, to look at sports in a different way. You know, what was the stress doing to our athletes? Uh, what was seven days a week um, long practices actually doing? Um, as we move to slide seven, and as I rapidly go through this, uh, one of the early things that we discovered is that um, that vitamin D was so important and that uh, athletes were deficient. Um, and and there, there's really a need a, a, for us to continue to investigate uh, vitamin D further. We know there's a difference between African-American athletes and, and, and white athletes in terms of their levels. We don't know what they all mean, but we, we do know uh, that, uh, that vitamin D intake uh, is uh, important. Uh, for the regulation of calcium and phosphorus absorption, and that's so important in bone health. Uh, and it's been suggested uh, to have a, a protective effect against multiple diseases and conditions, um, such as cancer and diabetes and multiple sclerosis. Uh, I was just uh, reading a paper a couple of days ago uh, where uh, it, it has uh, it received uh, some um, research, well, some research been done about preventing upper respiratory infections with respect to vitamin D. Uh, there's continuing work being done on vitamin D as we speak. Uh, the importance of vitamin D in sports and NFL and players' health uh, is something that we've written about. What we know is that uh, small deficiencies can affect performance. We know that uh, uh, high levels of deficiency and insufficiency uh, were discovered uh, on our team. Uh, and if we look at the Giants, um, we, we tested 225 players. Uh, over 3.2 uh, seasons, and it the players were split by race, uh, um, African American and, and non-African American. What we discover is lower levels of vitamin D independently associated uh, with uh, muscle and tendon injury. So. What we realized is that um, uh, our, we, uh, that we should begin supplementing our players, and we were able to discover this uh, through uh, the BFA. Uh, we have a, uh, a case study in slide number eight, um, which, it, which was very important because um, part of the BFA included an allergen panel. And what we discovered is that some athletes were uh, had uh, allergies to grass. Some had allergies to food that they only discovered through BFA, uh, from from seafood uh, to lactose um, to to other items uh, uh, in the food product line. And we had a linebacker with us um, who played uh, college football, was drafted in, in 2011, uh, and w uh, widely publicized. He had been diagnosed and survived a, a, a new Ewing sarcoma which is a rare uh, bone cancer. He underwent uh, chemotherapy, radiation while he was in college. Uh, and he was a participant in the BFA. He used the BFA to, to understand the reasons for his fatigue and his loss of muscle mass. He, he, he's one of our um, stellar uh, um, 
patients who really looked at every aspect of the BFA. What he discovered is that he had an allergy to peanuts, and he'd been eating peanut butter in excess, uh, peanut butter and jam sandwiches before every game. And I, I think this was able to, uh, to help him explain his sluggishness and his feeling of fatigue. And, and there are many other stories, uh, but th that's just one, um, including some of the, aller the other allergens, which we uh, we saw. As we go to the next slide um, um, uh, about uh, using biomarkers, um, I, I think that uh, that we're just beginning to uh, we are just beginning to scratch the surface. Um, I think that uh, um, the blueprint for athletes applies to all sports disciplines. That you. And not only use it for football, but you can uh, use it for other sports, uh, that it's a tool, that it, it's not the only answer, but it, it gives us uh, real data uh, that helps us fine-tune our athletes and, and make some actionable changes. Um, I think it increases the athlete's accountability. Um, the, the New York Giants uh, players are responsive to the to the BFA. Um, one of the uh, ways in which they participate is that it is part of their uh, physical examination. All athletes get an initial uh, a, a, um, um, blueprint for athletes, and then they're able to um, sign up and buy in uh, for regular monthly testing. Uh, and and I, and I find that uh, that those athletes who are extremely interested in their body, those who are interested in, in performing better, those who who constantly were asking us, how can I get more energy? Why am I so tired? I think many of them are are getting their answers uh, through the the blueprint for athletes, and it allows the athletic trainers, the team physician, and the the nutritionist a window to discuss with the athletes uh, some of the, some of these findings. Uh, I found it, I found it to be extremely helpful. I know that our, our Giants organization has, and, uh, and it's been a pleasure to talk about um, Blueprint for Athletes today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ronnie. Uh, so we're, we hope that was informative and interesting. We'll open it up to some questions. Um, but before I do, I just want to remind everyone that uh, we'll make this information available. Uh, we'll email you with where you can find it. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about Blueprint for Athletes, uh, we encourage you to contact uh, David. Uh, his email is up on your screen now. You can also email teams at blueprintforathletes.com uh, or visit our website at blueprintforathletes.com uh, as well. Um, so, uh, Ronnie, you know, the first question that we have is uh, asking uh, basically about, um, oh, so for the participants, if you want to ask a question, you can use the chat feature on your WebEx, uh, or you can uh, ask the operator once she prompts you, you'll need to dial star one to ask your question and star two to withdraw it. Uh, so, Ronnie, the first question that we have is just about how you um, actually administer a blueprint for athletes here at the Giants if the testing is done on site or elsewhere, and then, you know, how uh, through the season the players are able to stay involved. So the, the athletes' uh, first experience with blueprint for athletes is during their physical examination. Um, all of the NFL teams and, and obviously many of the colleges and universities uh, draw blood as, as a wellness component. Well, um, the, uh, we introduced the Blueprint for Athletes to our players uh, during this uh, physical examination period. That we have uh, 13 or 14 different stations um, that uh, athletes go to get their ears tested and have their blood pressure taken, a, a, a very active physical examination process. And part Part of that is, uh, is a drawing of blood, uh, and we try to educate them at that time about the blueprint for athletes. Uh, and um, shortly after this is done, they receive a booklet uh, with all of their test results and uh, with a very uh, fine explanation of all of those um, variables, what what they mean, 
uh, and uh, and it allows the uh, team physician to spend some time uh, talking about those uh, biomarkers with with the athlete uh, if they're interested. Uh, they can sign up, and, and many do, um, to uh, be tested once a month, uh, and it's done at our training facility, um, as, as well as the original. The, the beginning uh, test is done here at our facility, and, uh, of course, uh, Quest Laboratories comes out to the facility uh, and, and, uh, and tests once a month. Uh, thanks, Ronnie. So we have a... Another question relative to vitamin D, but before I ask it, could I just ask the operator just to review with everyone how to ask a question? Okay, I'll go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, we have one question from the phone queue, and that is from Mr. Sean Gibson. Your line is open. Hey, uh, yeah, guys, I guess, Ronnie, my question is, uh, obviously, here at the Bills up here in Buffalo, we, we kind of, uh, we've done the same thing with testing. Um, obviously, this past year, we had a couple of, we had uh, a blueprint came in for a couple of our athletes. Was there any type of waiver that you had for those guys as far as, um, you know, obviously, we, we do their their typical blood panel. Do they have to sign any type of waiver or anything like that to be able to uh, to do the blueprint testing? This is all voluntary, and you know within the NFL we're allowed to do comprehensive testing as we feel necessary. Um, we're certainly not looking at anything that would be controversial uh, on the biomarkers, and certainly not with respect to vitamin D um, because there are so many uh, – uh, well, it's well – well known that vitamin that athletes can be vitamin D deficient. However, um, we prescribe. We had our physicians prescribe um, a pharmaceutical grade vitamin D rather than promoting a supplement. Okay, because since we don't know uh, which supplements are clean and which are not, um, and vitamin D is so important to bone health, uh, we had our physicians do that. But uh, now in terms of, um, uh, of paperwork, certainly the normal um, uh, privacy uh, health work, uh, paperwork that goes along with collecting any biomarker is utilized, uh, but clearly um, uh, nothing of, of significance. Thank you. So we had another question about vitamin D, but I think you, you just answered it. Uh, and so we have one other uh, question from the WebEx. Uh, could you talk a little bit about what some of the uh, – you gave a wonderful history of, you know, sort of blueprint being implemented here at the Giants, and you talked about, you know, all the other technologies that um, – that you guys have implemented uh, as a result. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, were there obstacles in implementing this technology? Did everyone just sign on automatically, or, or how did you go about socializing it within the organization to see that it would be uh, something that would be beneficial to everyone? Well, the field is loaded with many of the new technologies, and I think the first thing that you do is that you, uh, as we did, is we interviewed, all, uh, for instance, when we were looking at Omega Wave, um, we, uh, we, we interviewed folks who were using it as well as um, a, as the manufacturer and, and, and the salespeople. Um, I, I don't think that the science bears out all of these technologies, and I think uh, we're, we're waiting to see which ones are valid and which are not. Um, but uh, clearly, we put together a, um, a a scientific team within our building, um, and um, and it, exclusive. Of of the coaching staff, but obviously uh, it's a sell to the coaching staff. I, I think our interest was so keen, uh, and when I say our, my interest, the physical therapist's interest, the uh, athletic trainer interest, and the nutritionist interest, and the strength and conditioning coach's interest. So uh, we all work together on looking at any of these technologies. I, I can say that I single-handedly uh, brought in uh, GPS technology. I thought it was so important to track player loads, and uh, it, it was incumbent on me to sell it to uh, our owner, to sell it to our coach, uh, and 
and and everyone in the building. And it's been successful. We've been, we've been uh, we've doing. We've been doing it now for four years. I think we um, we receive a, an incredible amount of data from um, the GPS catapult technology, uh, and it it uh, it correlates very well with uh, with the blue front for athletes as well. Thanks, Ronnie. Do we have another question on the call? I think we have time for one more one more question. Speakers, we have one from the phone queue from uh, Todd Sperber. Your line is open. Thank you. Hey, Ryan. Hey, how are you Todd. doing? How are you? Good. I'm great. Um, great to hear your voice. Uh, back to vitamin D. Yes. Uh, when it shows a deficiency and you administer the high grade quality vitamin D supplement, mm -hmm. pharmaceutical, how soon yes, prescription grade. Pharmaceutical. Yeah. How soon? Do you see a change in the levels, and are you seeing a better performance, a lower injury rate uh, due to the pharmaceutical grade vitamin D? Well, first of all, I, you know, I, I can't um, tell you whether pharmaceutical grade versus uh, what you would what you'd get on the shelf. Is uh, is any different? But what I do know is that in the NFL, you know, we're very suspicious of over-the-counter supplements, so uh, we're supplementing with pharmaceutical grade. Uh, I can also tell you that after one month of of uh, supplementation, we've seen um, we've seen numbers begin to change on vitamin D. Uh, and the physician is looking at those numbers uh, on a quarterly basis, um, or, or excuse me, on a monthly basis, to, to watch them go up. Uh, now, what we also know is that if you stop supplementation, the numbers go down. Um, we we do know that uh, sometimes vitamin D levels are lower in the winter. Um, when our athletes are not outside practicing, and uh, so. It, I, I think if you have been uh, deficient or insufficient in vitamin D, um, you need to our athletes need to continue to monitor that um, on a, at least on a quarterly basis um, and uh, and continue the supplementation under doctor's advice. But we we have seen changes in, in one month um, after supplementation. And the last part of the question is. Are you giving the RDA the recommended daily allowance, or are you boosting that, you know, 200, 300, 400, we're, 500 percent? We're, we're boosting it to 200, and there's a lot of science on this, so I, I'm certainly not making any recommendations beyond what the RDA recommendations are, but we boost it to 250, yes. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks again, Ronnie. I want to, uh, on behalf of uh, everyone, thank you again for your participation and your partnership. Uh, I just want to remind all the participants that uh, you can connect with David. Uh, he can help you get set up, answer more specific questions about your team or your athletes, and help arrange a test run for those interested. Uh, we will be sharing this webinar with you in an email uh, where you can review the presentation and the information uh, presented today, and you're also encouraged and welcome to share it with your colleagues or others in the field that you think might be interested. Uh, on behalf of Quest Diagnostics and Blueprint for Athletes, I want to thank everyone. We will be in touch, and have a great day. Thanks so much.